over the years I've looked at hundreds of thousands of photos taken by beginners and recently I've actually looked at some of my own beginner photographs and doing this I have noticed eight patterns that are very very common eight mistakes that basically all beginners in photography do. If you watch this whole video, my hope is that you will uh, recognize all these eight mistakes whenever you're about to do them and not do them. And I think actually avoiding these eight mistakes makes a big part of the difference between a beginner and a professional. <laughs> As a beginner, you might look at a photo that you really like and you might think to yourself, okay, I'm gonna take the exact same photo. So you find the place where it was taken, you set up your tripod and you take the exact same photo. But when you look at it, it looks completely different and nowhere near as beautiful as the photo you saw. And the explanation is most of the time that the professional photographer took the photo in a different light. And the understanding that there are different qualities of light and that they make such a big difference to whatever you're photographing, that is something that takes a bit of time to internalize. The most basic differences when you're photographing outside is of course, if you're shooting in the morning or the evening in the golden hour, everything looks a lot more beautiful and interesting because the light is a bit more yellow and comes from the side and often is a bit softer. Uh, in the middle of the day, you typically get the worst uh, kind of light that is just too bright, too harsh, uh, not bringing out the colors. Uh, yeah, it just looks boring and many beginners do that mistake. They go out in the middle of the day trying to take nice landscape photos and expecting them to look amazing uh, when instead they should have been going out in the first hour of sunlight. Another example of not understanding the different qualities of light is the softness of the light. You need to understand that if you're taking a portrait in direct sunlight, it will be very hard to make it look good because direct sunlight is very strong, very harsh. Uh, it kills the color tones, it makes the photo easily overexposed and overblown and the shadows are too uh, sharp, it just doesn't look good. If you just let your subject step into the shadow and take the same portrait, you will notice it looks a lot better and you have softer shadows, uh, softer colors and it just looks more professional. So that's just one basic tip. Try to utilize diffused light as you get in the shadows. Same thing if you're using a flash, always try to bounce it off some surface. If you point the flash directly at your subject, you will get hard, harsh, ugly light. But if you bounce it against a white ceiling, for example, you get beautiful, soft, diffused light and it makes a big difference. Blowing highlights or shadows. This is also something I see very often in beginners photographs that maybe half the picture is completely black because it is underexposed or because they did no post-processing or maybe the sky is totally overexposed and completely white and there's nothing you can do to save it because you shot it in JPEG so you cannot really save those highlights. My tip to you is always shoot in RAW, try to mind the exposure. Sometimes the dynamic range of a scene is just too big. It's impossible to catch all the tones both in the shadows and in the highlights at the same time. Then you simply need to shoot in RAW and go home and open up the picture in Lightroom or some other editing software and just lift the shadows a bit and decrease the highlights. This is the most common uh, change I do when I edit photos. Lift the shadows so that you can see more nuances in them decrease the highlights so they don't look overblown and your photo will look so much more professional and you will have a lot more nuances in it. Of course there are situations where you want a big part of the photo to be underexposed. For example if you're shooting someone and you want to have a silhouette then of course you should let that be completely dark. Uh, that is an exception to this rule. But in general, you want to have some definition, some information in the shadows and in the highlights to make for a more balanced picture. Unbalanced compositions. 
In general, you want a balance between positive and negative space. Positive space is what you want the photo to be about. For example, if you're doing a portrait, it is the person you're photographing. And the negative space is the background or whatever is around. And you want to have a balance there. You should not have 100% positive space, but you should not have too much negative space either. For example, look at this photo I took of a couple of deer. To me, it looked like a great photo of these two deer when I was there at the scene. But when I got home, I realized that this photo is like 97% just messy bushes. And I should have been using another lens or I should have been a lot closer to the deer to be able to take a nice looking photo of them. This photo, it just isn't nice. I, I should just throw it away. Look at this photo, a nice photo of uh, my wife and son, but if I only crop it a little bit to uh, put more focus on them, I think it becomes a lot better. Less distractions, more focus on what the photo is about. And I think if you look here and look at the two subjects, there is a balance between how much space they take up and how much space the background takes up. And that is important. In this original photo, the negative space, the background, and the surroundings take up too much space and the photo just looks unbalanced and that makes it look unprofessional. Another good rule if you're shooting an animal or a human and they are facing one direction, try to leave a little bit more negative space in front of the person or animal than behind. Uh, for whatever reason it always feels more balanced and better. Take a look at this example here and the different uh, crops that you could do. And um, I think you probably agree with me that the variant where there is uh, more negative space in front of it looks better. Another important aspect of this is to not have important parts of your photo in the edges. Uh, try to keep the edges of the photo and the corners free. Visualize it as a margin that goes around your photo and don't place any items uh, along the corners or edges. There is an exception to this and that is if you're trying to use uh, objects like bushes and stuff to frame the photo that can be a very nice uh, composition. But in general you should just keep the edges of the photo as distraction free as possible. <laughs> Not isolating shapes. This is a really common one. Most beginner photographs just look too messy. There is too much stuff in the background so your subject does not stand out enough. Every photo should have some kind of subject no matter if it's a mountain or a person or whatever it is. And you should try as best you can to isolate the subject and not have any distracting things behind it. The classic example is that you're taking a portrait of someone and some pillar or whatever object sticks out uh, behind the head and it just looks distracting and sometimes even weird. The human brain likes simple shapes, simple graphical forms. To take a nice photograph you need to be mindful that everything should have its own place in the photo and they should not overlap. Uh, every shape must be uh, seen as an independent shape and not have anything obstructed. Compare this photo, which is, yeah, it's, it's pretty okay, it's not super bad, but compare it to this composition, where I've placed myself just a few steps to the side, and uh, you can see that the buildings and my wife each get their own space, which makes the photo so much more pleasing to look at. Here's another example from the same scene, where I've managed to put each thing in its own space. You have these two uh, parts of the Sydney Opera House here. You have this small group of tourists here and you have the photographer and the stairs and the sky and all of these things have their own place in the photo and that is what makes it look pleasing to the eye. It makes it look clean and nice. If you have a choice of background pick the one that is the least messy uh, pick the one that is a uh, single color and calm and peaceful. Also try to utilize contrast. If your subject is bright, pick a dark background. If your subject is dark, pick a bright background. If your subject is yellow, pick uh, like a color that is very different from yellow, like red. Uh, to have some color contrast or some kind of contrast between 
uh, what you want to capture and the background, the photo will look a lot cleaner and more clear and the brain will interpret it as more beautiful. If you are unable to find a good contrasting background to your subject, use a fast lens. If you use an aperture of f1.4, you can blur out pretty much any background, if you're taking a portrait at least, and that can make a big difference. It's very important for every photograph to be successful and beautiful, to have a, a natural point where you tend to rest your eyes after glancing at the whole photo. The best way possible to do this is to use leading lines of some form that leads you to that exact point where the eyes are supposed to rest, where the subject is. Uh, you don't need uh, leading lines strictly. Uh, it could be enough to just have a clear subject that is the subject of the photo so that your eyes land there. But it's important to have a subject. And even if it's just a landscape photo, you should think about this. What is the subject of this photo? Is it that tree? Is it that mountain? Is it that mountain range even? And try to arrange the photo so that everything else in the photo kind of leads the eyes to the main subject. This is a typical example of a photo where there is nowhere to land your eye. I wanted to capture this scene, obviously, but like there is no subject. There is nowhere where the eye lands and uh, it just makes the photo look very messy and uh, not that pretty or comfortable to look at. This takes lots of practice, lots of thinking, but you should know about this mistake. It's so common that you're out uh, traveling in some new country, you see a beautiful landscape and you just take up your camera and click a photo of the landscape thinking you captured it. But actually you didn't because there is no clear subject and uh, the beautiful mountain range is too far off in the <laughs> horizon, so it doesn't really jump out to the viewer when they look at the photo. Always make sure to have a clear subject and always make sure that the subject is uh, apparent and big enough in your frame. I'm amazed by how often I see uh, people who are interested and passionate about photography post photos that are so obviously low resolution that it just hurts your eyes. There's like no detail in there because I don't know how people even do this. Either they maybe use digital zoom and like zoom in really, really far. Or maybe you're doing some extreme cropping. I don't know how, how people even do this. Of course, it's okay to crop photos, but you should never crop them so much so that it just looks blurry or so, or so that it doesn't look sharp. And if you need to crop a lot, uh, that is something you need to do from time to time because you weren't using the correct lens or whatever. If you have to crop a lot, just apply some sharpening. Do something about the blurriness that you will get if you crop too much. The sharpening tools in software like Lightroom is actually really good. Learn to use it and apply some sharpening and it will probably save your photo from just looking amateurish. And if you apply sharpening and it still doesn't look good because it's too low resolution, then don't post the photo. You have to edit yourself and you have to sometimes realize that, oh damn, that could have been a great photo, but unfortunately I wasn't able to capture it in the right way. I wasn't close enough. Or I wasn't using the right lens. It is too blurry when I crop it in. And then you just have to throw that photo away or at least not post it. Which leads me to the next mistake. <laughs> I think a great photographer takes just as many bad photographs as a beginner. But the difference between a great photographer and a beginner is that a great photographer knows what photos are actually good and makes sure to edit herself for himself so that you never ever post the bad photos. I've taken so many photos that I really wanted to post but I have restrained myself from doing that because no, they weren't good enough, they didn't pass my bar. I edited them out, they are still on my computer, I can look at them myself sometimes and enjoy them, maybe even show them to some family, but I would never post them online as one of my works. This is a typical example of a photo that I took. I viewed the scene and I thought it looked amazing with this town and the mountains and everything. I just brought up my camera, snapped a photo 
and my memory of the scene was that it was very beautiful and uh, indeed I captured the scene in my camera, all of it is there. But still, this is not a good photo. All of the scene is just too far away, it's impossible to get the same feeling that I had when I was at the location. And as a professional photographer you need to understand this. The photo does not represent the feeling uh, that was at the scene and therefore it's not a good photo and it should be discarded. For example when I'm doing flower photography as I love to do, I know that unfortunately there are some flowers that look really beautiful in real life when I look at them and I can really enjoy looking at them. But I know that no matter how I capture these flowers with a camera, they will not look beautiful in the picture. And that's sad, but that's just how it is. And then there are other flowers that aren't that pretty in real life but look amazing when you photograph them in the right way. You need to recognize that some subjects simply don't transfer to a two-dimensional photograph and you have to accept that and edit them out and not publish them. Over editing. This is so common and I think I did this a lot myself when I was a beginner. You take some photos of something, you expect them to turn out great. When you get home you look at a photo on your computer and it did not turn out great. And you're so disappointed because you really wanted this photo to be beautiful so you could post it on Instagram and receive all the likes and all the praise from the people. But it didn't turn out great. So what do you do? You try to edit it to become great. And this is often possible but more often than not, if a photo does not look great already in the camera, it's not a great photo. And what beginners typically do, uh, because they are inexperienced, they use the tool that they know how to use, which is the saturation slider. <laughs> and they draw it too far to the right and the photo just looks over edited. Uh, over editing a photo cannot save a bad photo. Accept that you didn't manage to take a great photo, throw it away and try again. Do not over edit it to try to save the photo because it just makes you look like a beginner. And that's it. Hope you liked the video. See you very soon again in another photography video. Do subscribe. Bye bye over and out.